Tell us, Joy. He, he, he does not seem to understand the difference between um, a racist country and a lot of them don't seem to understand. So what did he say that was so bad? Well, in his response to the State of the Union address, that interminable, soporific, ridiculous State of the Union address in which Joe Biden barely awake himself, put the rest of the nation to sleep, bludgeoning us into submission with lists of trillion dollar spending items and also suggested this old white man that America is systemically racist. Then Tim Scott got up and he said, well, no, America is not racist. And just because I've experienced racism in my personal life does not mean that America is completely racist, which is what mature adults think about the world. Just because a bad thing happened to you does not mean the entire world is against you. Just because people have been very anti-Semitic to me does not mean that all of America or its systems are anti-Semitic. So Tim Scott says this about being black in America. And this, of course, set off the left into a frenzy of apoplectic idiocy. A hundred years ago, kids in classrooms were taught the color of their skin was their most important characteristic. And if they looked a certain way, they were inferior. Today, kids are being taught that the color of their skin defines them again. And if they look a certain way, they're an oppressor. From colleges to corporations to our culture, people are making money and gaining power by pretending we haven't made any progress at all. By doubling down on the divisions, we've worked so hard to heal. You know this stuff is wrong. Hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. It's backwards to fight discrimination with different types of discrimination. And it's wrong to try to use our painful past to dishonestly shut down debates in the present. Okay, of course, every single word that Tim Scott says there is exactly correct. And this is what sets off the left. This is what makes them so mad. So he was subtweeting a couple of folks there. One of the people that he was subtweeting for sure was Ibram Kendi. So when he says it is wrong to fight discrimination with discrimination, that is a precise counter to Ibram X. Kendi, who has said discrimination of the past requires discrimination today. So Ibram X. Kendi not only disagrees with Tim Scott, he was basically being subtweeted by Tim Scott right there. Tim Scott was saying Ibram X. Kendi's perverse view of America and the, and the ramifications of Ibram X. Kendi's views are bad for America. Tim Scott saying that set off Ibram X. Kendi. So Ibram X. Kendi is an absolute grifter. I mean, this is a guy who's raised tens of millions of dollars based on the lie that not only is America racist, but that it is better for America if we treat every American by their racially essential characteristics, which is racism. Okay, so Tim Scott tweeted out that particular line from the speech. Hear me clearly, America is not a racist country. And Ibram X. Kendi then tweeted back, the heartbeat of racism is denial. We can hear the heartbeat clearly. Okay, so Ibram X. Kendi loves to engage. I mean, he's such a grifter. He loves to engage in these Kafka traps. So a Kafka trap is where you accuse somebody of a crime. It comes from Franz Kafka's The Trial. You accuse somebody of a crime, and then the person denies the crime. You say, well, if you really were innocent, you wouldn't be denying it, would you? Right, so the Kafka trap here is, if you say that America is not racist, this makes you a racist because you're denying that America is racist. Because only a truly non-racist person would acknowledge that America is in fact racist. You see how this works? Okay, now it makes no sense. It's full on catch 22 because there is no way to get out of that trap. It creates a completely unfalsifiable situation. It is literally the scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail in which they decide that to determine whether a witch is a witch or not, if you throw her in the water and she, and she floats, this means she is a witch and must be burned. And if you throw her in the water and she sinks, this means that she was not a witch and she's innocent, but sadly she's dead. That is how anti-racism works in Ibram X. Kendi's world. And by the way, he's a racist. Ibram X. Kendi is consistently saying things about how white people are inherently plagued with white supremacy. Ibram X. Kendi is consistently judging people on the basis of the color of their skin alone and suggesting that America's racial institutions are inherently racist because there's unequal outcome by race. Now, as I've said many times, you could, you could take any room in America, any room full of people in America, and draw a line along any angle in that room that separates the population in half. And you will find inequalities in that room. You'll find that on average, one group is taller and one group is shorter, or one group is fatter, or one group is skinnier, or one group has a higher IQ and one group has a lower IQ, or one group has more criminals and the other has fewer criminals. There is no line you could draw in any room in America in which the outcome on both sides of that line is exactly the same on all aspects that can be marked, right? That is just not the way that statistics work. That is not the way the world works. And that's particularly true when culture makes a difference which we know that it does. If you took a bunch of white people from Appalachia who are living in poverty and you put them next to a bunch of white upper-class people 
living in Manhattan, they're going to have very different life outcomes. And that doesn't have anything to do with color. That doesn't mean that the system is discriminating on the basis of whiteness. This is the point that Charles Murray makes in his book, Coming Apart. He talks about cultural differences between white people because he said, listen, I keep getting ripped on for suggesting that culture makes a difference in the outcome of your life because people say that has to do with race. So I'm just going to write a book about white people. I'm just going to write about a book about how there are differences within white America in how your lifestyle makes a difference to your outcome. It doesn't matter. They still call Charles Murray a racist because this is one of their favorite things to do. But you don't have to be related. This is just a religious worldview. And Tim Scott has attacked a religious worldview and the left sees him as a heretic and heretics must be burned. So it's not just Abraham X. Kennedy, who is the high priest of wokedom. It's throughout the media. It's throughout the culture. To have Joy Behar lecturing Tim Scott about systemic racism. Now, there's a word that people on the left like to use about stuff like this, white splaining. Joy Behar explaining to Tim Scott about systemic racism is just absurd at the highest level. First of all, Joy Behar cannot understand basic concepts. She really has a deficiency in, in intellectually understanding things. But here she is attempting to lecture Tim Scott, a black man in America who acknowledges that he's experienced significant racism in his life about what systemic racism actually is. Tell us, Joy, who, by the way, dressed in blackface in costume, as I recall, and still has her job. Here she is. Now, Tim Scott, he, he, he does not seem to understand, and a lot of them don't seem to understand, the difference between um, a racist country and a systemic ra and systemic racism. They don't seem to get the difference. Yes, maybe it's not a racist country. Maybe Americans, the majority, are not racist. But we live in a country with systemic racism. Oh, well, it's not a racist country, but, you know, it's still systemic racism because even though America is not racist, its systems are racist. But you can't explain how the systems are racist because legal racism has been illegal in the United States since the 1960s. So, as I've said before, the term systemic racism can mean a bunch of things. It can mean you're a racist. They don't say that. It can mean that every American deep down has implicit bias. They sometimes mean that. They could say that it means legalized racism, which is not true because that's been federally illegal since the 1960s. Or they can mean that history has consequences. And because it used to be that there was a lot of racism in the United States, that that has far reaching consequences downstream, which is true of all history. Right? It is always true that history has impacts in the here and now. But the question is how you heal that. And when you say systemic racism, the idea is there must be a quote unquote systemic solution. Well, that, but that's not right. The reality is the single best way to escape poverty is the same for every single American. Get married. Don't have kids until you're married. Get a job. That's it. If you do those things, it doesn't matter what race you are. You will succeed in America. You will not live in permanent poverty in America, statistically speaking, according to the Brookings Institute. But they don't want to talk about that, right? Because that puts personal onus on you. And so much of the left's belief in, in what needs to happen is that you don't have any personal responsibility. The government has to take responsibility for everything. I know what you're thinking. It's time to binge some more Ben Shapiro videos. Well, you are right. You should. But first, like and subscribe. Perfect. I'll see you in the next video.